Good morning, dear students. I welcome you all to the eighth day of your English class. And today we will be discussing a chapter in grammar of grade four. Before beginning, let's remember what we have learned in our previous class. We have learned what is a sentence. It is a group of words which makes complete sense. For example, I love my family. We have also learned the four types of sentences. They are number one, a declarative or also called an assertive sentence. For example, I have two pencils. Number two, an imperative sentence. For example, stop talking. Number three, an interrogative sentence. For example, have we met before? And number four, an exclamatory sentence. For example, what a pretty dress it is. Then, at the end, we have also discussed how the sentences can be changed from one kind to the another. For example, how a declarative sentence changes into an interrogative sentence. How an exclamatory sentence changes into a, a declarative sentence. And how an imperative sentence changes into an interrogative sentence and vice versa. Now, let's have a look in the picture what the mother is doing. We can see that the mother is cooking food. And if I ask, is it called a sentence? Then the answer is, yes, it is called a sentence. Why? Because we know that a sentence is a group of words which make a complete sense. So, after reading this sentence, the mother is cooking food. We can clearly visualize the picture in our mind. Now, every sentence has two parts. One is called a subset, whereas the other is called a predicate. And this is what we are going to learn in this today's lesson. That is, lesson number two, subset and predicate. Let's get started. Let's understand what is a subject and a predicate. Subject. A subject tells who or what the sentence is about. It can be a noun or pronoun, whereas the predicate tells us what the subject does or is. It generally begins with a verb. Let's see the same example. The mother is cooking food. As we know, every sentence has two parts. So, this sentence has also two parts. One is subject, whereas the other is predicate. Now, if I ask who this sentence is about, we can clearly say that the sentence is about the mother. And the mother is a noun or a pronoun? It is a noun. Very good. So, it is called a subject of the sentence. Now, let's see which is called a predicate. Is cooking a food? Here, if I ask what the subject that is, the mother is doing in the picture, we can clearly say that the mother is cooking food. And we know that a predicate generally begins with a verb. So where is the verb in this sentence? We can see that the verb is is. So is cooking food is is cooking food is a predicate in the sentence. 
Now let's see some more examples for the better understanding of the chapter. Let's discuss these examples one by one. Example number one. The boy is dancing. As we already have discussed that every sentence has two parts. One is called a subject whereas the other is called a predicate. But how to find where is the subject in the sentence and where is the predicate in the sentence? Let's do it together. As we have learned that the subject tells who or what the sentence is about. It can be a noun or a pronoun. So if I ask who is dancing in the sentence, so we can clearly say that the boy is dancing in the sentence. And what is boy? Is it a noun or a pronoun? Very good. It is a noun. So the boy in this sentence is the subset. Now let's see what we have studied about the predicate. We have learned that the predicate tells what or what the sentence does or is. So here if I ask what is the boy doing? So we can clearly say that he is dancing. And we have also learned that a predicate generally begins with a verb. So where is the verb? We have the verb is. So is dancing is a predicate. Now let's see the second example. My best friend is playing football. Again, who is the sentence about? The sentence is about my best friend. And what information do we get about my best friend or the subject? That he is playing football. And we know that a predicate generally begins with a verb. And where is the verb? It is is. So, is playing this predicate whereas my best friend is subject. Let me do here also so that it will be easy for you. This is the subset and this is the predicate. Now let's see the last example. You are a good student. Indeed, you all are my good student. Now let's see the example. So, you are a good student. Here, again, who the sentence is about. The sentence is about you. So you and is it a noun or a pronoun? You is a pronoun. So you in this sentence is the subject. Whereas are a good student is a predicate. Why? Because if I ask what the sentence does or what the subject is. The subject is a good student. Means you are a good student. And we know that a predicate generally begins with a verb. And where is the verb? We have are. So are a good student is a predicate. I hope it is clear to you all. Now it's practice time. Now, it's practice time. But before doing this, I will request you all to get ready with your pencil and a notebook so that you can jot down this question in your notebook and then try to solve it. So here is the question. Match the subject to the predicate. So we have two columns here. In one column we have the subject, whereas in the other column we have the predicate. So in subject, we have number one, the shops, number two, the house, number three, the furniture, and number four, the car. And in the predicate, we have as A, was made of teak wood. B, 
crashed against the tree. C was selling beautiful clothes. And number D we have had many rooms in it. Your time starts now. Yes, all of you, hurry up, hurry up. Do it fast, do it fast. Very good. You can do it. Very good, very good. You can do it. I know that you can do it. The time is running out. Five, four, three, two, one. Pencil down. Yes, all of you, pencil down. Now let's check the answers. So, number one. The shop. Let's check which one is the suitable predicate. Was made of teak wood? No. Crashed against the tree? No. Was selling beautiful clothes? So this is our number one. Now number two, the house. The house was made of teak wood. Okay, let's check the another. Crashed against the tree? No. Had many rooms in it. Very good. So this is our number two. Now number three. The furniture. So the furniture was made of teak wood. So this is our number three. And last we have is left. The car crashed against a tree. That is number four. I hope you all have done it correctly. Thank you everyone. Please check the link in the description box for home assignment.